Good morning, evening, or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to the Sunday Drive Racing League live from Suzuka. I am James Parfit, and I am joined in the booth this evening by the one and only the mighty Biggles has joined me this, this evening for this absolutely epic evening of racing. And what an amazing race this is going to be from an absolutely iconic circuit that is Suzuka. We can have a look at the circuit now, guys. Currently sat with six previous configurations, three current configurations in use today. We've got the West Circuit, the East Circuit, and the Grand Prix Circuit, the FIA Grade 1 circuit with a capacity of 155,000. It opened in 1962. Current major events it holds is the Japanese Grand Prix, the FIM, EWC, the GT World Challenge, the Asia Super GT, Super Formula, FRJC, Super Taiyaki as well. And it is in for an absolute major treat tonight as we've got the GT3s racing around. We've got 18 turns, 5.807 kilometers or 36.8 808 miles and a track record lap time set on a 130.983 by Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes W10 in 2019. Absolutely iconic circuit. I think it's time now that we brought the one, the only, the mighty Dean Biggles into the booth. Good evening, Mr. Biggles, sir. How are you? Good evening. Yes, it's almost midnight for me, very early in the morning where you are in the United Kingdom, mate. So no Silverstone in this time zone. We are obviously in where we, we, we mentioned this before, didn't we, where uh, the uh, trains are so efficient, mate. They're quicker than a pit stop around Suzuka. Mm. And uh, by the way, I did break that lap record with one of my concept cars that uh, Sir Lewis Hamilton has to yield. Uh, Sir Lewis Hamilton has to yield that one to Sir Dean Biggles. Oh, very nice. <laughs> very nice, no, I'm my kidding. dear. But, <laughs> anyway. Well, I think the Suzuka is just an iconic circuit in general, isn't it? You know, we've 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 been there before. There's there's it, it's just iconic spoon. They don't realise they're overlapping each other. You know, when they go underneath the circuit, it, there's just so much going on here. I think it's just an absolute classic circuit all round. Yep, we, 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 we were just here the other day, of course, mm. in, your, in your broadcasting network. So, yeah, I'm doesn't feel like I've even left Japan. And, of course, there's a Ferris wheel to watch it if you do DNF. And I'm pretty sure the drivers don't want to be sitting there up on the Ferris wheel watching it. They want to be trackside and putting those uh, various beasts around. Of course, you've got Audis, you've got Bentleys, you've got BMWs, you have Ferraris, you have McLarens. And Lexus, as I believe. Yeah, I'm mistaken if I miss one. As Aston Martin. Well. What we're going to do, guys, is bring you up the current driver's standings. Now, as you can see, overall standings currently at the moment, Tony Rodriguez is leading the way on 16 points. Alex Shen on 14. Charles Ho on 13. Eric Chu on 12. Mei Dong in fifth on 11. Jason Ludwig on 10. James Namak on 9. Michael Gilbert, 8. Chris Namak on 7. Rob Lau on Six. Then we've got Matt O'Dor on five um, um, after that as well. So we've got Matt O'Dor. Then we've got Nick Show on four, Matt Kelly on three, Sego May Ma on two, Aaron Peters on one. Then we've got the non scorers behind that. Now, currently in the team championships, Paper Mongoose with the team of Tony Rodriguez, Charles Ho, and Juan Namak are on 18. Then we've got Akina Speed Stars on 16. Raven West. Motorsport on 15, Team 4 on 12, LLIDP on 11, Fear the Cage on 10, and Wishmakers on 4. Now, the interesting thing about Team Fear the Cage, now, this is one of the things that made me laugh from the first one, is if you have a look on the front, Biggles, of Mei Dong's car, there is a glaring head of Nicolas Cage. Now, Last time oh, out, wow. it was scary enough to look back from a car and see that car coming towards us. But it's even more scary now because they've repositioned his face so we can see him more clearly. So, uh, May Dong there with the face of Nicolas Cage on his uh, front of his car currently. So, uh, yeah, there he is as he goes down through the pit lane. So we get to stare at Nicolas Cage 
What more could you ask for, Biggers? Uh, yeah, well, Nicholas Cage would be uh, trackside there as well, too, supporting his team, no doubt, that are supporting him. Uh, and speaking of those team names, wow, I mean, uh, Paper Mongoose? Uh, where did that come from? And that's a very creative. I think I've never seen those two words strapped together in a, a name before. Yeah, no, me neither, to be fair. Don't forget, guys, we have got three classes this evening. We've got Pro Class, Silver Class, and we've got the Amateur Class as well. So they are all on track this evening at the same time. Now, each driver does have one in each class. So we will keep you up to date of who is in whose class. So we've got Chris Namak, Matt O'Dor, and James Namak make up Ravens West Motorsport. Then we've got Keener Speed Stars with Alex Shen, Jason Ludwig, Matt Kelly. Paper Mongoose, we've got Tony Rodriguez, Charles Ho, and Juan Namak. Team four is Sago Ma, Michael Gilbert, and Nick Shaw. Now, this is <laughs> the ELLADP, which actually stands for the Leak Less Adult Drip Pans. And that is a pro team of Eric Chu, Aaron Peters, and Bradley Remedios. And then in Fear the Cage, we've got Robert Lau, Mei Dong, and Raul, Raul Tauva. And then in Wishmakers, we've got Jace Merrick, Jaime Mendoza, and Matthew Orpheus. So uh, there we go. All these wonderful car, all these wonderful team names, Biggles, is um, quite amazing, to be fair. That's a lot to take in. Exactly. Yeah. Creativity 101, of course, here for the Sunday Night Driving series on your Monday nights. That's actually turned right now, clicked over in the East Coast to Tuesday. So, Sunday, oh, Monday, Tuesday. We uh, talked to Mr. Uh, who, Lando Norris about that. He likes to sing that song, didn't he, back in the day? But uh, <laughs> let's, uh, yeah, let's just uh, slow the cars up a little bit from a Formula 1 and go to a GT. No, this is uh, Jason Ludwig currently at the moment. Um, Jason there, he is currently is sitting in the Bentley. Uh, this big Gruffalo Bentley that we have on track for us at the moment. Now, this is an interesting car. It, it kind of reminds me of a massive house brick on wheels, to be honest. It's absolutely ginormous. Takes up most of the space when you're looking back at it. And uh, yeah, it, it, Jason does the job in it, but it, it's just absolutely huge. It absolutely is. This street, I mean, it's, it's a classic track course, but it's, it's more of a motorbike track, I'd have to say, than anything. A test track course built for Honda. Because the MotoGPs happen here a lot, the two wheels, but we're going to uh, double that and get the four wheels. Let's get some of that time in. Qualifying session is definitely underway. 13 minutes and change left to go at 2.03 2 p.m. in the afternoon here in Suzuka. And who's going to put that car on pole position to secure themselves the best possible chances into the first couple of runs? And after that, you've got to follow everybody through those crazy S's. Mm. I think... What we can do is if I pick up on Tony Rodriguez, jump in the car with Tony and look at going on a uh, fast lap with Tony. Tony last time out won at Silverstone, was absolutely incredibly quick, like insanely quick. Um, but here he is going down the back stretch before we go into the Casio Triangle. Um, and then we'll be going off for a lap. Let's do it. Let's ride on board. Shotgun, of course. And you're going to take us through that one. Right, here we go. On this run down the start, finish straight now. To the first lap here today. So we're going to go right into turn one currently at the moment. Before we go up through this Essex section of the circuit. And then we'll be leading us off around up through the S's we go here tonight. So we're going to be going right and we're going to come around this looping right hander before we start going off left round Dunlop. 
Run it wide over there. You're going to be out like that, basically, as Tony has just kindly demonstrated for us. So that was absolutely incredible of him to do that for us. And then we come down into Degna 1, the right-hander before we go into Degna 2. There we go. Through that Degna section, quite a tricky corner as we're coming now up to the hairpin section here tonight. Left hand, a slow first gear here for Tony. In that Aston Martin, before we go on the run around 200, a long right hand up. Heading down into Spoon at the moment. We're going to be maxing out the gears as much as we can. Fifth gear. Then we're going to be on the brakes just about now into third, running around the left hand side here. Letting the car drift wide, trying to hug the apex again on the second part before we go off down down towards the back stretch will be a run, straight run all the way down through 180 the R on the left hand side. Oh, fifth gear he's in currently at the moment. Here comes the corner, sixth. So, oh, chase down into fifth on this run into Cassio Triangle. They're gonna go under the bridge, on the brakes. We're gonna turn right and then we're gonna go left. And then we're gonna come round the last turn down the start, finish straight. Such an interesting circuit in, in the interim there because, because it kind of, you know, does everything and it's got everything. It's got slow corners, it's got a hairpin, it's got sweeping S's. You know, it's kind of got it all, isn't it, at the moment? And even vending machines, trackside as well. But you're right, yeah. That's why it's a classic, that's why it's a, a driver's favourite generally across the board because of those sweeping corners and that's something... If anybody is gambling out there on a controller, that's going to be even more of a challenge there this evening. But it's, uh, once again, the steering wheels are going to be able to dive, uh, define your finite movements there on your wheel. But uh, it can, it's possible also to drive on a controller. I'm not quite sure if anybody is aware that anybody is driving on a controller. Please shout it out there in the chat. Best no, of <laughs> wishes if you are. Will be. I don't think they will be. <laughs> I think it's, it's um, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's all steering wheels here tonight. I think, I don't think, it, I've n never actually keeping an eye on the chat, on the chat in Discord. I don't think there was actually anyone driving on a uh, controller, to be honest. James, you know but, anything's possible. Nina does it with his mouth. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> It does it with his mouth, his head, and, and everything else. But so fair play to Nenad Vladiasevich there from uh, another league. But he, I think, is an exception to the rule. He's just incredible. He yeah. wants to drive, and he's, he's designed so much. He's been amazing. But currently, we've got Jace Merrick sitting on pole on a 159.460. The only man into the 159s at the moment. Charles Ho in second. Jason Ludwig third. Se uh, Sege Ma in fourth. Robert Lau is in fifth. Matt O'Dor in sixth. Chris Namak in seventh. James Namak in eighth. Nick Show in ninth. Michael Gilbert currently rounds out your top ten. Yeah, pretty impressive too. That's uh, eight tenths up on everybody else as well too. So just uh, in a league of his own currently at the moment and the Ooh. Audi driver. And of course, he's got a couple of other Audis in there running a P6, P7 currently, P9 of course, and provisionally for the qualifying. And then Mr. Al down there in P17. Yet the set of time as well as Mr. Rodriguez, which is interesting. Rodriguez, as you mentioned, the championship here. Let's see. What's yeah. he doing for the... Uh, Aston Martin. Tony is exceedingly quick. It, they, last time out in Silverstone, it, it was just incredible. He's, he's exceeding, just unbelievably quick. I think that was the term that people were using, and it was just unbelievable. Right, guys, so since round one, which seems an absolute age ago back in Silverstone, we have had a schedule change due to the dates clashing at certain points. So we've got here with Suzuka, currently um, today and then on the 28th we go to Donington Park and then on the 12th of December we've got Alton Park then after that we are going to have a break until into January when um, in the 2nd of January we go to Barfest and then on the 16th we round out the season in Watkins Glen so Jason Merritt there going with a new fastest lap on a 159.130 so uh, fair play to Jace. He's going even quicker than he was. So there has been a schedule change since the first time in Silverstone. This was actually due to the, the clash of the Christmas period. Um, they were looking at the end of rounding out Watkins Glen. I think 
it was on the 27th, but they have changed that since the last time. So uh, the uh, it will be, as I say, changed now. So that is the new schedule. Suzuka here today, Donington on the 28th, Alton Park on the 12th of December, and then we've got Barfest on the 2nd of January, Watkins Glen on the 16th. So there we go. But back in to qualifying. Five minutes left on the clock. Jace Merrick on a 159.13. Charles Ho 159.9. Mei Dong on a 159 as well. So Charles Ho and Mei Dong broken into the 159s. Woo! It's getting spicy. Spicy. You're getting hungry again, James. I know you haven't had your breakfast just yet, my friend, but you might be getting a little bit of a GT breakfast. As you can currently see the Bentley, you can definitely see the Bentley driver because he's got that nice bright white livery there. What almost looks like a bit of DHL yellow colors on there, whether he'll be delivering himself a hot lap around Suzuka quicker than anybody else's. Chris out there says, let's go Gilbert. Eight from the race, first in our hearts. Oh, well, he's currently sitting down in 10th in qualifying. Yeah, so hopefully, you know, you delayed message on that one, <laughs> Chris. It was eighth at the time, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there we go. I think it's um, really he's going to see what Tony can do. He's sitting down in seventh. He did confess earlier on that he didn't quite have a um, – he hasn't been out and done as much practice. So I know he jumped in the practice server earlier on as well to try and get um, some laps on the board, but didn't quite um, get the time that he needed this week, I think, and, and that's going to be quite interesting. So we have got a 15 minute quality. Then we go into a 60 minute race. There's no refueling if needed. And then there's one tire change the guys have got to make. So they've got to make a tire change stop. Um, so there you go. Yeah, you got to get some fresh boots on. That's the key. And when are you going to put the fresh boots on? Because it's a 60 minute race. Are you going to gamble from the undercut there? You can see, uh, track again. Yep, yeah, turning it into, into a very expensive lawnmower there for Tony as Mr. Ludwig goes past. We got, Are we going to see the usual under the figure eight, of course, as you know? That's uh, where we've we've seen a lot of the momentums, you know, at, uh, coming out of what the second... Uh, second deck knows. Second deck knows. Yeah, that's the tricky one, isn't it? Yeah, this is the where, J, where basically um, Ludwig is now. He's gone around Degna one, keeps it on the on the curb, and then he's coming around the right hander of Degna two. Yeah, That's there it is. That's generally the place that people may go off there. That's why they had um, that big barrier there. Obviously, you can see that was planted there to absorb the impact that the car hits out at a, 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 a two hundred excessive miles per hour. Well, not two hundred yeah. there, but hundred and something and change, I'd imagine. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, go Charles, says Chris in chat. So uh, there's two Chris's. Big... Yeah, I've got two Chris's. <laughs> Chris Kim and Chris. So uh, so yeah. will will the real Chris please stand up? Oh, right, Eminem. <laughs> yeah. You're whacking about as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it is the morning, guys. You know what I mean? Just like to point that out. Gonna wake you, you up, know? James. You're okay. You're already oh. awake, mate. It's all good. I am already a mate, mate. It'll be fine. Don't you worry about it. We'll get this done and uh, sorted out here tonight. Tony Rodriguez is not having a good time at this circuit currently. I'm not going to lie. Um, he seems to be really struggling here tonight, which is a, a, unheard of, really, because it, you weren't kind of expecting the word struggle and Tony in the same sentence. But it, it does look like he's uh -huh. not doing well. Uh, Mei Dong is going a little bit quicker. He's... he's Oh, he's, he's actually dead to heat with his previous lap time. So uh, they are on the left-hand side, guys, as well. You can see the greens means they're going quicker than they were before. And the reds means they're going, obviously, slower than they were before. So don't forget, guys, as well, today's events, you can go and check out one of our sponsors, which is ACC Drive. The link is down in the description as well. Below the Racers Toolkit, trusted by the Sunday Drive racing community. If you plan on taking your racing to the next level, there's no way around ACC Drive. It's the first app to let your remote control set a pit stop for your teammate. The driver can finally focus on the road without worrying about the strategy, which was a massive step up. It's quite helpful in solo races. It shows the position of incident cars ahead of time and has a hub that tells you how to park the car when you go into the pits to get picked up immediately. So just to name a few of the features. The app has really helped 
in the races and uh, you should definitely go and check it out as well so the, the affiliate link for the sunday drive is down in the description below right guys as well i've got to take that message off because the nominations for the simmies have now closed oh we are at the hands did you vote for james race. did you vote for your broadcasting network i hope so if it's a little bit too late now to do it yeah they all have it all closed we find out t tomorrow whether or not jpb is will be on the final nominations list you're so gonna share that ca the tomorrow. british caster of the year award there with uh, alex jacks of course that uh he, he won the uh the television network broadcast of course so, so congratulations alex and maybe congratulations james we'll find out congratulating somebody at the moment mo very much looks like mr merrick might be the one congratulated because He's got the purple sectors and the best time in town in Japan. Uh, currently at the moment, Sega Ma is making improvements in the big McLaren. This is coming down into the hairpin section as well here tonight. So Sega Ma. It's been an interesting one, I think, for that McLaren. I've got to be honest that they've got this a how can i put it not a car that most people look at driving you know we've got matt kelly in the mclaren and the sego marlo you know we've got ferraris audis lexuses bentley's as well and aston martin's a bmw so there's a mix of everything here tonight it's just going to be what's going to come out on top and currently it's the audi of jace merrick a few uh, million dollars on cars on those tracks and i'll tell you what you wouldn't deny having any of those parked in the garage would you as the mclaren's going to make no. his way down for the final time to cross the line to see where he's going to improve from P9 up or not. He's going to stay in that same position, and he will stay in the same position. P9 there for Sergio. Ooh. Yeah. So that is a rounded out, out qualifying. So you got Jace Merrick on pole. Uh, Robert Lau in second. Charles Ho third. Maydong in fourth. Tony Rodriguez in the end managed to get to fifth. Matt Odor in sixth. Jason Ludwig in seventh. Chris Namak eighth. Sergei uh, Sego Ma in ninth. JB Alcabar in tenth. Nick Show in eleventh. Michael Gilbert twelfth. James Namak in thirteenth. Juan Namak in fifteenth. Matt Kelly in uh, sorry in fifteenth. Jake Han. Hallinan in 16th and Aaron Peters in 17th place. So there so, we go. Yeah, I am seeing two uh, Namek names there at the moment. One's an Audi, one's an Alexa. So they are uh, siblings? Or? Right. So the way this works is James and Juan, they're brothers. Um, and then James uh, is the dad of Chris. Wow. So, All right. All right, so that's that's me keeping you up to date with the family tree for the Namaks this evening. So uh, yeah, that's how it's all working. So we've got. Jason's Does the apple dad. fall far from the tree? As I say. Well, there we go. Um, they're lucky enough, they're not all in the same team, um, which is good. We got Chris and James are in the same team, and then Juan is in a completely separate team. So Juan is in Paper Mongoose with Tony Rodriguez, and Ravens West Motorsport of Chris and James together. Session uh, is ended. Qualifying is over, and that that's it. So your time to shine right now is on the spotlight time. It's because it's race time. This is where you actually earn your paycheck, isn't it? Earn those points, of course. We're only in round two of this season. So we have quite a few to go. Not a great deal. It's not like a Formula One calendar of 22 races. So, I mean, geez, who has the time for that to put the practice in and all that sort of stuff unless you're getting paid, what, a couple of million dollars a year like Formula One drivers? Nope. Mm -hmm. We're doing this for fun. Yeah, I've definitely not paid that much. Definitely not. But there we go. Cars are on the grid. Be ready to go. Uh, well, we do know that there's going to be uh, Nicholas Cave smiling, isn't it, on the right-hand side there for the BMW? That, that livery just absolutely <laughs> creases me up, bro. Like, <laughs> See, it's psychological so warfare, ridiculous. isn't it, when, you, when you're driving <laughs> a, you know, ahead of them and all you can look in your mirrors and you see Nicholas, Nicholas Cage smiling at you. That's going to throw you off, isn't it, as you try to break into those uh, crucial turns here in Suzuka. 
Any predictions yeah. out there in the chat there for who do you think is going to take this race win away? So Merrick looks like he's got some pace there on the Audi. The 446 car and the 420 car of the BMW lined up aside from him. We all know that there's great overtaking opportunities into turn one and two, isn't there? And talk to Prost and Senna about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be an interesting one, I think. Right. So I am going to switch over to the, the um, other overlay for a minute, guys. There is a problem with the previous race overlay. So we will be using this one. It's not recognizing the uh, classes, as you can see there on the left-hand side. Um, the classes are pro is in white, silver is obviously silver, and the amateurs are in red. So uh, Nobody green? This one. Nobody's green. <laughs> Ah. So uh, there we go. Um, so we will use this version of the overlay. What's going to be interesting as well, stuff. too, James, is that uh, that the other BMW, the 69 car, is lined up right behind his teammate on the very right-hand side of the track. That's uh, stage right for uh, us in the broadcast menu. Stage left, I think it is. It doesn't really matter. We're not talking about theatre at the moment. The only theatre that's on display here is Suzuka, and the only theatre that's on display, of course, is Sunday Night Racing. That'll about to start very, very soon as everybody's loading into their grid positions. They're fueled up, ready to go. They have to take some tyres. That's about it. Visit your pit lane once, hopefully. Only one time. Be the most hopefully. efficient. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, if they do only do it once. So, that would be amazing. If it is only once, of course. Unless there's any major dramas, and then it will be too. But, hopefully it won't be. That's what the Let's little see. one indicated there on the right-hand side of the driver numbers. That indicates their pit stop. So, once they take their pit stop, yeah. that will go to a zero. Yeah, it will completely disappear, become a nice green bar to tell us that they pitted. So, there we go. Right, we are going on to the pace lap. Here around this amazing circuit. So, what's your predictions, Biggles? If you, you know, first time here tonight, if you could just pick one driver who you fancy as winning, who would it be? You always did that to me, don't you? Yeah, I know. Throw me un un under one of those British buses immediately. Hey, they come along in freeze, mate. I've got to do something. <laughs> Uh, based on Merrick's pace, I'd say from the qualifying, if he could just run away with this one up the road there, that Audi driver for the number 46 car. Could see the check and flag and all my, as I just saw, Nicolas Cage on the side of the car there. If he could manage to survive the Nicolas Cage onslaught from those BMW teammates, then yes, he'll take the, uh, the champagne first in Japan. Well, there you go. As you can see, the ever-looming Nicolas Cage right behind us. There, that is the car of Robert Dow, uh, Robert Lau, and then we got Charles Ho, and then Mei Dong is also in the Nicholas Cage livery as well. So we jump onto the back of Charles's. There's the second one. So that's just unbelievable. <laughs> like, <laughs> now I'm going to try to do like some that. race highlights there. I'm just struggling a little bit with the overlays and, and jazz like that as well for the menus there of ECC. We don't really ask you, James, but how do I get rid of some of these menus that pop up there? I can't remember the keys, but we do have them rolling around their warm-up lap. About to go underneath the figure eight soon. Yeah. Well, I think for the next hour, guys, if you're not buckled in and you haven't got a drink and you haven't got sitting back with some popcorn, I think you're in for a bit of a shot because this is going to be absolute unbelievable racing here tonight. As we look down at the cars that go down into the back stretch, they're going to start filing into too wide. There we go. Grouping up ready. It's going to be interesting to see what these guys will be able to do. Tony Rodriguez down in fifth place currently. As we wait for the rest of the field to catch him up, Biggles ready to go. 
I was born ready for motor racing, that's for sure. That's why I sit behind the casting box so I can continue to do this for years and years and years and, and not have to retire. Hopefully nobody right. will have to retire from this race. No, let's hope not as these guys come filing through Casio Triangle. Could be green flag racing. Got to get a good launch here, Mr. Merrick. All right, here we go. Everybody's going to file up. Nerves of steel right now, isn't it? Into turn mm. one. It's going to need to, I think, mate. That's got to be anytime soon. There it is. Yeah, green, green, go. green. Yeah, Jace Merrick is leading the way. Currently out in front is Jace goes down into turn one. Tony Rodriguez there is in fifth place. Maydong, Robert Lau in second. Charles Ho in third. Tony there is having a battle with Maydong. They're side by side. Tony does come out on top this time around. So that is Mr. Rodriguez up into fourth place. JB Alcabar is another one that's moved up into a position as well. Currently up into tenth is JB there in the Audi. So he's chasing down Sego Ma at the moment, but it currently leading us away is Jace Merrick here oh. in the Audis. For Big the accident time. in the back there. We've got an accident involved between 15, 16, and 17. Mr. Peters, Mnemonic, and uh, Hal, I think it is, and Kelly. I don't Hallinan, know what happened there. Hallinan. Yeah. Yeah, Hallinan as well. We can have a look back at that one and uh, seeing how that one panned out. So this is with Jake Harlan. Uh oh, he goes into the back of the Lexus and there comes everybody else behind him. And uh, yeah, where would you put that? Would you put that on Jake itself? Because obviously it's tough overall, isn't it? You know what I mean? You, you got that run and he just kind of overcooked it a little bit. See Tony Rodriguez going off track as well as we will go back into live pictures. Up front now with Jace Merrick, Robert Lau, Tony Rodriguez in third, Maydong in fourth. And then we've got Charles Ho in fifth as these guys go racing down into Cassio again. Tough one there, Biggles, I think, for that. I, I, it kind of, they checked up in front of him and he didn't kind of have anywhere else to go, did he? Yeah, no, absolutely not. That's just what it is called uh, racing. Oh, somebody's run off a little bit wide off there. Sorry, at the moment, I'm just trying to see the pictures. Are we getting at the moment here? Currently on still lap one. Oh, number 11 car there. That is James Lamack. Just gone round at the back end of the field on the last turn. And uh, James there not having a good time of it as he just went round. But Jace Merrick setting the pole on a 204 637. Brewing up so, in the middle there too as well too between both the Audis there stuck behind that McLaren with the Golf livery and that's a battle for P8. Yeah, uh, JP here um, with Sago Mart and Michael Gilbert. See them now running around Dunlop before we go into the double right hander of Degna one and two. Tucked up nicely right behind each other at the minute. 57 minutes remaining, guys. Don't forget, they have got a pit stop to take as well. Let us know who you think will be your favorite. As we can see here with JB chasing down Sago. Right in front of us at the moment. There is that McLaren. Of course, Sago now trying to chase down Chris Namak as well. Oh, there is uh, Matt O'Dor behind us. And there is the McLaren of Sago there. Say sometimes slow and steady wins the race at the moment. You've got to remember there's still 56 minutes to go. So no point risking it for the biscuit that early just yet. But hey, if gap car, as they say, so seize the opportunity if it's there. But no craziness, I would say to perform just yet. Wait until you're down to about a couple of minutes left in the race and then try something. Yeah, I think that's going to be the thing that these guys have got to be patient for. You know, they have still got 56 minutes remaining. And uh, I think they've got a long old time. So it's just basically, I think, making a difference and trying to gain as much as you can without being crazy about it. Because at the end of the day, 
The last thing they want to do is, is have any, any incidents. Oh, Sega runs wide. We're going up the inside with JB. There was contact there. Contact there, but JB made it through on Sega Mark. Patience. So is... Exactly. Mm. Further up at the field there, it looked like Mr. Ho there got past the Ludwig. 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 Sorry, I'll get it right. Ludwig. Ludwig, there it is. Sorry, my apologies. Ludwig. Biggles Butcher back in town. Yeah, Jason Ludwig there just lost the position to Charles Ho. So, uh, I'll be see how that one pans Look at out. the gap Charles... that, that, that our race leader's got already. 3.7 seconds. He's in a league of his own. He's already in Tokyo and we're still here in Suzuka. Yeah, Jason's done really well um, to get that gap early on. He's got the fastest lap as well. And then we've got the two... Well, Nicholas Cage, Maidong, Robert Lau, Tony Rodriguez. It's a Nicholas Cage sandwich there for Tony Rodriguez. Yeah, oh sitting no. there in the middle. <laughs> That's scary. Paul Tony. Yeah, Absolutely. in the Aston. <laughs> That's what I mean. Paul Tony sat in there between the middle of the Aston Martin. The middle of, is in the Aston Martin in the middle of two green and Nicholas Cage BMWs. I, I don't think that's a position that I would want to be in. And the livery uh, on the side, of course, when you really do see his face. And he's like, he's got to see Nicholas is everywhere. He's got to be wake up in the middle uh, after this race there uh, and with nightmares about just seeing Nicholas Cage's everywhere. Not counting sheep, counting Nicholas Cage's before you go to sleep. Let's see at the moment, but because uh, Mr. Yeah, Rodriguez, of course, you said leading the championship at the moment. Oh, oh that's uh, going straight on through, wasn't it? Robert Lau, yeah, straight yeah. through. That has released Tony Rodriguez up into, first, into uh, third place now. Oh, no, he's actually being second. It will correct as they go across the line. So Tony Rodriguez will go into second. Maidong in third. Charles Ho in fourth. Chris has gone past Robert Lau as well. Jake Hallinan has gone up into 13th. He's gone past Nick Show. So very interesting there for them guys. JB Alcabar is still fighting away with Robert Lau as well. Obviously, Robert had that off and he's now coming back on track. Michael Gilbert is a lover man who's looking at the moment in his car. He's currently got Sego Ma behind him, so it's going to be an interesting battle how they pan out as these guys go looping up through this S's section of the track. Where would you say, though, Biggles, or if, if these guys are close enough in, in this middle section, what do you reckon? Well, who's close at the out? moment is because the battle of the white cars, of course, there. That is the Bentley. Uh, it's a Dong. And Jason, they're going for two for now. That's battling for P4 currently at the moment. So Bentley versus Ferrari. Maidong. Maidong looks like he's been off track because he is dropping down the order. They did. And he's gone down into eighth currently at the moment. What's happened to the Nicholas Cage's team? Yeah, we'll have a look back at Maidong. Oh, there we go. Into the deck. There he goes. Which is where we were talking about earlier on with the flashpoints of the Degners and that is basically the situation um, there for Mei Dong. He's just gone off. But so, Rob, Robert uh, Lauf here, the cage, of course, are coming back because he's got the back of that Ferrari to try to do something about it, of course, and there's a bit of an Audi, Audi between them. And then Mr. Dong back in P8. So, yeah, they're surrounding, sandwiching the Audi, of course. Well, actually, believe it or not, P6 is an, as a BMW, then an Audi, then a BMW, then an Audi, then a BMW. Mm. But this man, well, 4.1 seconds and flying, I think, would be the term for Jace Merrick here today, Biggles. Yeah, and all the, the, Mr. Rodriguez just put, now it's in clear air, and can get on with it, just put the fastest lap in. Now, he did shave about almost uh, about three and uh, eight tenths or something like that. There. So he doesn't want to let Mr. Merrick get too far up the road, and he's probably the, the one that can try to bring that battle closer for the P1 position at the moment. But four point mm. something seconds and change to gain is a bit of time, but luckily he has 51 minutes to get it done. Yeah, we've got Chris here as well. Got Lau behind him. Currently at the moment, there is a gaggle of cars behind that, to be fair. We've got Chris, Robert Lau, then we've got J JB Alcabar. He's having a battle with Mei Dong. Currently on this run round, Dunlop coming down into Degna 1. That's Mei Dong through. So Mei Dong up into seventh place. He's got JB now behind him with Matt O'Dor. Michael Gilbert behind that. Then we've got Sega Ma behind that. 
And then we've got further down the order. We've got Juwan Namak and Aaron Peters. And James has just got past Nick's show. That's because Nick has taken a diver off up through the Dunlops. So James and Juwan are now through 14th and 15th. Oh, Ooh, not really. There goes, yeah. No, there goes Juwan Namak. He's just gone off track in the Lexus. The only man in the field in the Lexus. Um, so I think that's quite a interesting thing, really, because I... I don't know if I'd want to take a Lexus, so there we go. Charles Ho is currently in third place. Fastest lap is set by Tony Rodriguez, currently at the moment. So, uh, fastest lap there. Check out the two, the two Audis there, putting the pressure on the back there of the BMWs. And at the moment, you kind of wonder whether or not JB and uh, he's the, the, the other driver behind him, Odor, can, can try to get past. Yeah, because... At the moment, they seem to be so much more quicker, but then it's, it's one thing to catch, another thing to overtake, and where to overtake, maybe an opportunity as you go up in turn one and start another lap. Yeah. 49 minutes remaining. Pit window will be open in about 15 minutes. It does open in the middle of the race, and then they will have a pit window to uh, basically go into the pits. Oh, Maidong looking at like he was going up there. JB's now closing all over the back of him as they're going up through the S's currently at the moment. Oh, Maydong's not looking too comfortable at the moment. Biggles, is he really with that sort of looming JB there behind him? He's not. He's actually, his teammate is uh, getting, his teammate's actually putting a bit of pressure on the car up the road too on P5. So multiple battles, multiple actions. Uh, and he's, uh, he's still holding them off. That's the key. It's allowing his teammate to try to put some pressure up the road there. And I can tell you, guarantee you one thing, right? As you mentioned there, isn't Mr. Dong is seeing red in his mirrors right now. Fearing, he's fearing the cage, but are they fearing the cage? No, I don't think JB really is worried too much as these guys come around the hairpin now. Ran a long looping, looping right hander all the way down into Spoon. And then they're going to be on that long back straight down into Casio Triangle, which is, I think, where we're expecting most of the overtakes to take part, I think. And here we go. Lau and Chris. Very close together. On this run down we go now. On board with Robert Lau. With Chris Namag in front of us, we're going to be looking at the left-hander. Lift, po lift, point, go, I think is the term. Oh, right well, I, 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 I would say he's licked a step and send it like Daniel Ricciardo would do if he could. <laughs> Don't you have to be last of late breakers like Dan DC used to be DR. And I don't think he's going to have enough to do it here going up into turn one. No, it's, I think he's going to be a little bit further back, I think. A little bit too far back. Yeah, he's not going to get it down into turn one, unfortunately. So uh, we'll have to see what Robert Lau will be able to do as we're going up through the S section. JB dropped a bit further back from Maidong than he would have liked. So uh, JB Alcabar there, a bit further back. He's now got Matt O'Dor for company, however. And the ever-looming Michael Gilbert is closing up behind him as well. So this could be an interesting one as these guys battle it out. Off through Dunlop we go. Chris has still got Robert Lau behind him. You know, we've still got 46 minutes. So it, what do we think here with that? Well, I think uh, I, I can... I, well, no, no, you tell the driver to be waiting. That's, that's something that drivers don't like to do. Some drivers, it's, it's mental patience is very, very difficult when you want to go as quickly as possible. Zag out there. I can hear you, mate. Over the 155,000 jam-packed people here in the Suzuki. He says, let's go, Charles. I thought I could hear somebody screaming out from the stadiums. And that's Mr. Zag out there. G'day, g'day. But as you mentioned, yeah, I don't know. Patience is, is something that uh, you learn as, a, as an experienced racing driver, doesn't it? Remember, Max Verstappen had none of that. He's the uh, first early days of his career. Uh, he's... Um caused a bit of a ruckus this weekend, I think. And um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how that one turns out in the next race from Abu Dhabi, I've got to be honest. Um, but look, let's not go into the debate of the Formula One because um, we could be here all day on that one. 
Chris is asking, can we see an interior of uh, Mr. Uh, Charles at some point? For sure. Your wish is James's command. Want to get a chance? Right on cue. So much going on in that car, isn't there? In that Aston Martin. Yeah, the new Aston Martin too looks Ooh. absolutely amazing. But at the moment, the paper mongoose needs to uh, to put uh, all the best laps he possibly can down on paper. With 45 minutes still to go, plenty of motor racing, cool, calm, and collective. I always say, rip the mirrors off your car. Just complain like most drivers do, so you can't see anything in your mirrors. Well, they have a little uh, onboard camera, don't they? They can kind of give you all the vision of what's happening behind. Yeah, they got a rear view, um, both there. See at the top right corner, got a rear view mirror, then they got a rear view screen. Oh, keep it on, bud, because you've got Jason Ludwig not too far behind you. Jason in that looming Bentley behind him there, because I think that's going to be one of the interesting things of what that Bentley will be able to do here against this Aston Martin. Hey, he's got that Bentley as well, too. The 97 car there has the uh, Assetto Corsa Competizion uh, AWS, powered by AWS of uh, Amazon Web Services. He's just sitting there following through. I have to say, you breathe a sigh of relief every single time you manage to survive the second day now. Yeah, that second Degna is so, so tough. And it's not tough because it's a, it's a difficult um, corner. It, 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 it's just tough because it can catch you out. And if it catches you out, you are going to be in trouble because that bounce into that wall on the left-hand side, there's just physically nowhere to go for the drivers. You know, they've got, mm. they've got to be looking at maybe they to keep at least the Degna is clear. Well, James, maybe they need to fear the cage right now, as you can see, because uh, Robert Lou is trying desperately to get past that Ferrari, both of them now. The Line of Stone teammates, of course, and the BMWs. And they have to find a way through here at this point, too. You kind of wonder who's the quickest of the two. Nicholas's? Uh, mm, I think uh, it would be Robert. Uh, Mr. Lau there. Going to put Chris under pressure. But that has allowed Maidon to close quite considerably really because he was having a battle with, that, with JB Alkbar. So the fact that he's now caught up to the guys in front is just going to show whether or not Namak is kind of almost, and I don't want to sound in a detrimental effect, but slowing them down, would you say could be a term? Yes, it could be. I mean, it's a different ball game. Remember, the Ferraris weren't that great when it comes to the qualifying performance or the race performance at the moment. He's doing a solid job there running in the P5 and keeping the BMW team behind him. And of course, you've got a couple of the Audis and another BMW back in P10. The other Ferrari at the moment is actually making a run on Mr. Kelly as well. And there's an overtake, I think, between those Audis, speaking of which, of, of seven and eight. Oh, well, that's because he's going off wide. track. Here you go. Here's the danger zone of the Degna 2. Yeah, Matt O'Dor did clear JB and then run a little bit wide and JB's managed to get through. But I don't think it's going to be too long before Matt O'Dor is having another go. Oh, look at the battle in front. Chris and also there with Robert Lau Maidong. Chris has got the two looming. If one Nicholas Cage wasn't bad enough, he's got two of them. Oh, no, Robert here we Lau go. Diving up the inside. He's got to see it's Nicolas Cage's face at the side of the car too as he overtakes him. He does. So he's got the job done. Can the other Nicholas get it? No, the Ferrari says, nah, I want it back. I'm sponsored by Fat Attack, and my Fat Attack wheel may give you a little bit of a boost here. We'll see. It ain't over yet. Oh, is he going to make their way over the figure out. eight, of course? And then Cassio Triangle will be dictating whether or not you've calculated the right times on your calculator. Oh, Doug's going to make the move as well. Oh, there's going to be... Oh, there was nearly contact. There was... Ne oh, Doug got a big slide on there. Big slide on, and that's brought him into the clutches of JB Alcabar. He's gone on the right-hand side now, on the run down into turn one. He's going to be through, made Doug. Is he going to lose a position to Matt O'Dor as well? He is. So Matt O'Dor is also through. So uh, poor Maidong has gone down now into ninth. But that's one of the dangers, isn't it? He went on the offensive in the Casio Triangle, got a little bit out of shape coming around the last corner, and then loses three positions for, these, for his troubles. Yeah, and the 420 car goes up a couple of places, and unfortunately the other one drops back for the other BMW, as you can see. 
and he has to get that all done. He's uh, got a couple of Audis up the road now, and then, of course, a Ferrari. And look at the exit speed he's got here, but nowhere to go. Get ready for Degna time here in Japan for race two of our Sunday night driving. Oh, they all make it through this time. But that, that, that double set of corners there, Degna one and Degna two, is just unbelievably scary if you if you get them wrong so yeah you're absolutely correct and at the moment even though Rodriguez has put in some pretty quick quick laps and has the fastest lap he's now 5.2 seconds and change down from mr merrick so mr merrick is responding to any of the attack there from the aston martin and at the moment this is where all the action is brewed up for your tickets here for suzuka Definitely Nicolas Cage is the spotlight this evening, isn't he, so far? He's been in almost all the broadcast pitches tonight. All right, the pit window is open, guys. See at the top of the screen, they do have 20 minutes from now to pit. So they have got to be um, in for the pits. As I say, there's no fueling. Oh. And Rodriguez just boxed right on cue, right as soon as that pit lane window opened. Whoa, contact! Whoa. Oh, May Dong and Matt O'Dor. May went in well deeper than he probably should have done. And another one in the pits there as well. So JB is in. Rodriguez is in. They're, of course, going to go down the order. Yeah, we'll get an idea, indication on the pit stop times for the first time here on lap 10. And with uh, 39 minutes to go, as you said. So just trying something completely different. I mean, he wasn't. Obviously, he, he couldn't get the pace. He couldn't ca catch Mr. Merrick. So maybe an undercut will pay off for him as get some fresh tires on that car and then see what he can do. If he comes out in clean air, put some banker laps in and see if that strategy will pan off a little bit later. But once again, that's all about the ifs. If but car. If but car. <laughs> If but, if but car. Yeah. Let's see what they can do. Uh, Tony is on his way out of the pits now. Of course, he's dropped all the way down into 50 place. Aaron Pierce has just got past him. Aaron is my uh, favorite love at the moment. He's got the uh, Lightning McQueen livery on that Ferrari. However, he has got a looming Tony Rodriguez behind him, mind you. Um, so Aaron there. They did actually, because you missed it last time out in Silverstone. Um, I did actually sing a little bit of Life is a Highway, you know, the one in the uh, Lightning McQueen movie. I'm not going to do it again, so please don't ask. But yeah, Tony Rodriguez just cleared Aaron Peters at. Chris is still chasing down Robert Lau now, of course, up into fifth place currently. So uh, let's see how this one pans out this evening. It will definitely pan out because at some point in 37 minutes and change, somebody will be seeing the checkered flag. I was going to say Barney, but Barney's uh, unavailable, of course, this evening. Mm. He's busy over there on the eye racing. Merrick's gone in, so the race leader's gone in. Now, this is going to be interesting. As Rodriguez, gamble, gamble paid off. Keep an eye on the track map that you have to see whether or not the undercut is going to work. Yeah, I think for Tony Rodriguez, he's, it's going to be a, a lot. He's got to try and gain. He is coming down the back side of the circuit, of course. Yeah, Marek's still on the pit lane there, as well as uh, both of the uh, BMWs. And he needs to be just doing the old Schumacher days, wasn't that Schumacher? He used to put those banker laps in during the pit stops there. He down the main straight away oh, and to start another goes. lap, where is uh there he is Merrick? In the background. Yep. So Merrick Merrick cleared yeah. due on uh, yeah, he got a big old gap there. Over Tony Rodriguez. Oh, Jay Scott on the yeah. grass. That's never good. Um exactly. but he got a big old gap over Rodriguez there, mate, didn't he? he, he cleared him and, and well we've changed to spare really it paid off mm. absolutely oh it looks like the ferrari driver had a little bit of an off moment there that's uh mr hallinan jake he's gone really slow there had to lift off there and allow somebody through back in p12 currently at the moment i'm not quite sure what happened to the 49 car well it's coming round 
Dunlop. And Merrick, uh, Merrick now is putting pressure off those fresh boots in town straight out of the gate, and he's on the back of Mr. Kelly battling for P7. Of course, remember those other drivers are yet to take pit stops. Merrick is the one in the net lead of the race. And making another gain here. Look at that. He's got to be more confident in those tyres. He knows he has traction. He has pace. He has speed. He's got to make sure he can clear the McLaren as quickly as possible and make sure he can get a little bit more of a breather there. As yeah, Rodriguez done. also makes the overtake in the background as well. Yeah, he done there as well. Rodriguez up over Joao Namak. Don't think there was going to be much of a fight. Obviously, we've got three different classes currently. So in the pros, Chris Namak is currently leading, the horse, leading us off. In silver, we've got Charles Ho at the top. And then in the amateur, you have got Mr. Matt Kelly, uh, your current three leader class leaders. So that should be, see how that one pans out. But at the moment, they've still got yet to pit here. And, and oh! 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 Yes! His contact because he was, he was he clearly had the speed. He has to cut all the way through here at the moment. Thankfully, pulling in the right direction there. But obviously, the different classes there has caused a little bit of issue. And that just gives a little bit more breathing space. As all right on cue at that point, uh, Mr. Merrick gets a uh, somebody jumps in the pit lane, so he's got a little bit more of a breathing space there for the Audi driver. His wishes are coming true for the wish making team because he's in the net later this race. Yeah, he is going to be overall as well. But there was definitely contact there with Tony Rodriguez. I think he kind of made the move that almost you, you, you want to turn around and say wasn't really there. But clearly for him, there was a there was a gap that he went for. And it, and it just, well, I don't know. Maybe it's difficult, been... isn't it, with the different classes and stuff like that? Like you see it all the time, don't you? In the endurance series where you have LMPs and GT3s and all that sort of stuff and the different pace difference and that's just what spices things up. Mm. As uh, Zag out there screaming saying Charles is first, easy money. Charles is first oh. at the moment, but Charles has to make a pit stop. Sega Mar going coming out of the pits. James Namak behind there, so Sego gets in front. More importantly, there was Mei Dong, JB. And then Robert Lau, so Mei Dong leads to three after the pit stops currently as well. Tony's fighting his way up. He's now back up into seventh with Jace Merrick, who was your leader before the pit window. Um, these guys, both of these guys have pitted. So uh, it's now just a straight fight to see. So see Ju on there. Yeah, pit lane there for he's, the Silver Squad. Yeah. Of course, in their tier. Pits. Yeah done their pit stop as well so uh, fair play to them now how do you be interested yeah. now with the last 32 minutes biggles with where jace can get himself to you know how deep can you go as well too on that pit window it's gonna be well it's, how, only, it's yeah. really it's really how deep charles is gonna go isn't it really yeah exactly motor and michael gilbert are in so Jace is now up into fourth. I think he should get the lead back quite comfortably here. And give you an indication of the pace, of course, Mr. Merrick's done a, a fastest lap just before on the last lap, so he's doing a two-minute flat almost. The guys at the front of this race currently in the moment are doing 2.03s. So that's about three seconds a lap quicker on the fresh boots. Mm. Yeah, definitely is. And uh, as you say, Charles is at the front. Leading the uh, silver class up with Jason Ludwig behind him. Yeah, that's a battle, of course. Remember, they are the different classes, so they're focusing on winning the silver division. Hey, if they beat, yeah. uh, obviously, the pro class, then that's even more of a benefit for you. But you are in your classes for that very reason. And leading the red class at the moment, which is uh, Mr. Mnemonic down there in P12 as uh, Mr. Peter's boxes and so that Ferrari driver will drop a couple of places. So there he pissed up windows, about 11 minutes of change to go and we only have four drivers remaining. The top three and then Mr. Down in 15, Mr. Show. Yeah. It looks like, mind you, is he has already gone in. I don't know if that's not cleared off there. We will keep an eye on that. So, 
Yeah, I'll we'll have to see what Nick does there. And so currently I'm seeing the the, um, the time is up where it looks like he has already pitted. Chris has come um, in right now for the, from that P3 position, so he'll drop some places there for the lead Ferrari. And you got to sit there painfully, just wait and wait and wait and wait and listen to those cars purr on pie down the main straight. Every single time you hear that zoom by, that's just like, you know, that's another position lost. Yeah, he really needs to come out here before May Dong does, because obviously, you know, this is the battle for position. This is where May was trying to fight with Chris and Robert Lau before they go into the pits. So Chris is just leaving now. There is May in the background. Yeah, May's got it for sure. Yeah, yeah bang. He's got it. Chris is not even out. It's where JB's going to come out. Oh, that was not good for Chris. Oh, he's lost not a lot of places, he hasn't lost, he? Yeah. yeah, he lost three places in that pit window. So staying yeah, out lost. long has cost him that time, as, as, uh, as I said before, too, because, you know, they're lapping in the 202s, 203s, and uh, the fresh boots are lapping in the 2s. So by staying out long, it's costing a couple of seconds per lap, but uh, it's not going to pay off. But he's come out in the fresh boots, and right now he's looking at putting a bit of pressure there on the Audi for the 220 mm. car for P6. Yeah, he's, I think, oh, Robert Lau there, and JB. JB's just got past Robert. No, JB's up. JB is off. Well, that's an easy overtake if you want, isn't it, to out of Degna? Yeah, he's managed to come back on track, though, but he has lost a to place to Robert Lau. I swear, they're just getting thrown off uh, psychologically with every time I see Nicolas Cage's face on that delivery car. I'll tell you what, <laughs> it's not bad, isn't it? Psychological. Oh, a change of the lead of this race at the moment. No, they're both in the pit lane. There it is. So they've elected to go in there. So there's Jason oh, and uh, Charles. Yeah, Jace Merrick. Jay should take the lead of the race now. Yeah, he he's will. Going he's going down the, the main straight away right now, mm. and uh, it's no problem because they just jumped in the pit lane. But more importantly is where they're going to come back out. Well, they go in third and fourth. Uh, Tony's gone through as well, so they need to really come out in the same place that they went in. Charles is on his way out. Maidong is coming around last corner, so yeah, Charles mate. will maintain the position and so should Jason it'll be interesting yeah they are out right now you remember at the moment Mr. Maydong going flat flat out but yes they have yeah retained where they were at weren't they really oh they drive through they... penalty are we seeing at the moment there for uh, uh Jason Ludwig yeah Ouch. coming up on the tower so I'm guessing that may have been speeding in the pit lane yeah for sure absolutely you get that drive through penalty because that's what you're, uh, you know, that's why we have uh, speed limits, don't we, on our regular roads? And you have to do the same thing because think of the safety, of course, from all those virtual team crew down there. Mm. So the pit window has um, nearly come to the end within the next seven minutes. I know it says it shows Nick's show's not been in, but I'm pretty sure Nick has been in. I don't think the software's picked up that he's been in at the moment. Um, but he has got seven minutes remaining on track just in case he hasn't. But as I say, I'm pretty sure he has. So currently out in front, you've got Jace Merrick in first place, really kind of led away from the green flag and has not had any issues since. Tony Rodriguez in second. Charles Ho in third there. However, so yeah, you have to remember fourth. too, that was about a four and second plus change before the switcheroo. Mr. Rodriguez went in first. Merrick went in a little later. But, uh, yeah, the gap is 3.7-ish, 3.2 now. So it's uh, it's not too bad. It's very manageable. You've got 26 minutes to try to do something about it. We'll see if he can continue to match the pace there of Merrick. Otherwise, I think Merrick is just easily going to run away with this one for the Wishmakers mm -hmm. racing team. Yeah. I think the interesting thing for Ludwig here is um, this is going to release May Dong. Yeah, Ludwig's going to go in for his drive through. Get yeah. it under speed this time. Keep an eye on the battle that's brewing for P7 as well, too, because it kind of bunched up a little bit here. Yeah, so, Chris to Chris. Look at the positions Ludwig's losing. 
still in the pits and cars are still streaking past him. Ludwig all the way down into 10th from 4th. Oh, he's going to be in. He'll come out in 10th, but I don't think Sego Mar is going to basically catch up with Ludwig. Uh, Ludwig now is going to come out and is in 10th place. Damaging, absolutely. Drive through penalty. And uh, unfortunately for Jason Ludwig, goes down the order. Beauty of it, he has 25 minutes to make it up now. Because your pit stops are done. The mandatory pit stops are over. Time to get your head down and put some banker laps in and, you know, damage limitation, as you'd always say. Ferrari still tucked up behind the Audi and trying to find somewhere around that. If he doesn't, of course, he has Gilbert Odor. All tucked up behind oh. them. Classic shot from the camera there as you saw the car go over the top as we went underneath. Call it. Yeah, you're going to fix that camera too if you drive over it. That's come out of your paycheck there, James. I'm not Ooh. paying for that, mate. It's too expensive. Look at the door there. Side by side, I believe, there with Mr. Gilbert. Almost. Golf yeah, racing okay. team. Matt O'Dor from Ravens West Motorsport. Chasing down Michael Gilbert. They have updated their livery, golf racing. Don't forget as well, we do have a couple of rever uh, reserve drivers in tonight. He's going for it. He's going for it. Down the main straightaway. Casita Triangle will be the place of who's going to be the last of the late breakers. Side by side. BMW versus Ferrari. Actually, all right, my apologies about that one. I'm getting all mixed up, but you can see what you can see. Yeah. So it's actually it's quite interesting to know because JB Alcabar is running in the pro class. But he's not. He's actually in silver. Um, for Alex Shen and the Akina Speed Stars, Jake Hallinan will be running in the arm class for Matthew Orpheus and the Wishmaker team. So that is your changes to the teams. And this pit stop window is going to close so very soon, as you mentioned. So it's all done and dust. Actually, Nick just came out of the pit lane. So he did not take the pits. Out. Yeah, you're right. No, he took it at the very last minute. And out there, uh, it's sliced and iced now. I like that. Sliced and iced. Very good. He got a Chris fan club out there big time. All I'm seeing in the chat there is go Chris, go Chris, go Chris. Yeah. Well, go Chris and Charles, Charles of course. Well. Yeah, that's it. Starts with a C. Hey. Well done, you. But the gap's starting to appear on circuit at the minute. It's really mainly around Mr. Chris Namak and Matt O'Dor is your current closest battle on circuit. You have to say, yeah, Chris, obviously in the pro class, oh. about to be under, under attack from the silver class, but still holding their puck in that Ferrari in all the right places. But at the moment, still. Uh, still chasing down uh, JB Alcabar. I yeah, tell JB. You, he's, JB's defending for his absolute life there. If he could stick up a wall and have a bricklayer out the back, I'm sure he probably would. <laughs> Welcome on uh, to JB because... casting. Can you come up with those puns, mate? I was waiting for that one. You repeat that? Hey. Stick a brick wall up? What? Yeah. It's it, it, <laughs> early in the morning. Get off. It, it, it's the defending, isn't it? It's, it's when they're defending, you know, like JB now. It, it, let's put it this way, right? If JB was sitting there and in that Audi, he had a kitchen sink, a ladle, a potato smasher, a pot a pan or whatever he's going to be chucking out of the window if he had a builder in the back building a brick wall to stop chris getting through he probably would do that as well so at the end of the day if he had 11 footballers stashed in his boot i'm sure he'd have them all on pit on track like jose Mourinho defending his life away so you know there's a lot of defending going on with jb at the moment did you rehearse that because <laughs> that no. sounded pretty good fantastic see this is why you gotta love yeah the, the broadcasting no, obviously here uh, I, revert, I, lo I love casting of you, mate, because you come up with that all the time there, and I'm sitting back in the giggle, and somebody clipped that, of course. Absolutely. That, see, that's the reason why I hope, my friend, you get uh, an award there for the uh, Broadcasting Semi Awards, because other caster comes up with those kind of wherever the hell you come up with that there, James. Hey, my brain works in mysterious ways. I tell you what, JB Alcabar is going to be working in mysterious ways in a minute, because Chris is climbing all over him, coming into Degna 1. He was going to try and make it through there. I'm going to tell you that. He's got to come through Degna too cleanly. I did. There's that shot again. Look. I'll take Chris. 
It's literally climbing all over the back. And now what's worse as well, Matt O'Dor's going to be joining the party. We're going to have a three-way battle going on at the moment. JB is, as I say, guesting this evening as well and is doing an absolute amazing job for him. Yeah, they'll be joining the party. We'll be doing some sake shots later on in one of the karaoke bars here after the race. We'll see who's the best oh. singer, right, James? What do you reckon? We'll see. Not me, mate. Not me. I'm, I'm sounding like a croaky frog currently. I'm not going to lie. Um, but it definitely won't be me. And I won't be singing any forms of songs from Lightning McQueen either. <laughs> Mr. America won't be singing, uh, yep, I'm the champion today. He continues up that. He's got a seven-second gap almost there to Mr. Rodriguez. So maintaining and getting it done, 20 minutes to go. Should be cool, calm, and collective, especially with that gap there. You can afford to just lift it a little bit more and chillax, as I said. He's already thinking about heading off to the next round. But this battle is yeah. definitely brewing, isn't it, for P6? Yeah, Jace has just cleared off, isn't he? He's gone already. You know what I mean? He's, he's well, as you say... He's off in to the next one because he's done an absolute stellar job here. Here we go. Opportunity for the Ferrari. No, not there. He's sticking his nose in there, reminding Mr. JB that, hey, I'm here. But you got to obviously give it to Mr. JB because they're in different classes, of course. JB's in the silver class and uh, mm. Chris is in the pro class. No, I'm wondering if because obviously he said JB was running for Alex Shen. Um, covering Alex Shen off this evening because obviously coming in as a substitute. So Alex is in the pro class. I'm not quite sure if the sub has just not picked him up that JB is in the pro class as well. Oh, so, yeah. So I think that might be an actual battle for the pros there. All right. You can see that in the battle of surviving your way through the deck. Now, here oh, we go. Oh, Last of the late breakers. That's going to be bold and brave. Oh. And that's a little bit too. Last of the late breakers. And now all of a sudden you've dropped two oh. places just like that. Hey, come on, James. I know your uh, stone dropping reference. I need to hear that one. Uh, try... <laughs> not yet. He's not gone for down far enough, Big Old. You can't tell he's going to do that. Oh, Matt O'Dor. Matt O'Dor there thought he was going to be making the move as well. Didn't quite get it done this time. But Chris is going to have to come and try and fight his way back onto the back of this battle. As you can see there, everybody's kind of a little bit more spread out than this one. Not right now. There it goes. Oh. That's over the figure eight once again. You forget that you actually just crossed the track and now Cassio Triangle. But we haven't seen a massive amount of overtaking the Cassio Triangle. It's more out in uh, getting a good exit into turn one. And the Degnas mm. have been producing all the fantastic results here in Japan this evening. With 17 minutes to go, we've done about 20 laps from the lead at the moment, Mr. Merrick. Yeah, Chris has got an absolute barnstorming run here at the last corner. What's he going to be able to do over Matt O'Dor? Nothing at the moment. Nothing at the moment from them guys. This is Matt Kelly. Matt now battling away. So there is Matt Kelly. Uh, a little yellow there for a second. I think the Ferrari had a moment. Yeah, Ferrari Jake has had Cameron. a moment. What's happened to Jake? He's in the fence. And that Jake is, is uh, out of the S's. Yeah, let's have a look back. Oh, he's already in the fence there. We're going to go back a little bit further up back than that. Try and have another look further back there for Jake Hanlon. He must have been sat there for quite a while, you know, because I've got about, like, literally near enough a minute at the moment. Yeah, he had to wait, didn't he? Isn't there just uh, yeah, probably like? He looks like he's just lost it on the S's, didn't he? And then unfortunately for he him, did. he's just gone round. I think he's probably winded there for a second, trying to catch his breath, and then had to back up there because he was a lot of cars behind there, and, and uh, obviously very great admiral driving. You know, find here at the Sunday Driving Racing League because you know he he knew that there was other cars behind, didn't want to risk it going backing up there and destroying other people's races. Just chilled, yeah. got his breath back, and uh, still back into the race. Of course, no doubt. First, you finished. To finish first, you first have to finish. Yeah, and Jace Merrick is definitely going to finish now. He is absolutely flying along. Currently, he's, he's in first place, and he's just kind of dominated the evening, really, hasn't he? He got out in first from the start, and that was kind of it for Merrick. You know what I mean? Mate, you put me, in, you put me under the British bus and said, you said, okay, I had to pick somebody. Well, I did pick him. 
Yeah, but so. you picked the man up front. Well, that's you because know? that's because his sheer qualifying pace was there. His sheer pace overall was there, so you can't deny it. I mean, you there's remember, something you else. Remind me. You remind me of a kid at school who, Man United, who, uh, obviously a football team over in the UK, were winning everything back in the 90s when I was at school. And you ask a kid who your favourite football team yeah. is, and he goes, oh, Man United, because they're the winner. Yeah, oh, I know. Mate, well done, you. No, Good I'm job, not man. like that. I'm not like that. As yeah, one of, one of, yeah, one of my closest friends in Australia front. used to be a Lakers fan and used to be this fan and that fan. I'm like, now you're changing your team, so he's a Heat fan all of a sudden. He was this and that. I'm mm. like, I'm still... Going for the Clippers, man. They haven't won any championships, and they're not even getting. And I'm like, that's what I, I I commit. That's fine. I commit. But you put me under the, you put me under the bus on that one, and I had to predict something at that point. But we shall see, mate. It's still early. It's only round two. We have more to come. Yeah, you committed to the man at the front. Because don't don't tell Fibs. Oh, drive through penalty from a door. Just there. How did he get that drive through penalty? It's just clicked up there. Oh no. Track limits for Matt O'Dor, so that's going to drop him down the order. Drive through penalty for Matt. That's going to that's hurt. That's going to be a kick in it. Yeah, that's going to hurt. Now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially in the last 40 minutes. He's going to go back down behind Jason Ludwig. And that is going to kill Matt O'Dor. Any form of momentum Matt had is going to be done and dusted. And it will make an easy pass for Chris, though. Chris should be able to just cruise past while Matt goes off and serves his penalty. That's going to be painful, isn't it? When you have a number one on your oh. car there. Number one on your car at the moment, and you're going to be probably outside the top ten very, very soon. Well, that's why they have track limits for a reason, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> put it into perspective, right? He's going to have a kick in the teeth. He is going to be literally sat in that car, reeling. And it's going to be reeling because he's only got 14 minutes left. And he is going to drop now. Here we go. He's now going to drop down the order. Faster than a stone in deep water, because watch this. There goes Matt. Here goes Chris. Here goes Michael. That's two. Jason Ludwig is not going to be far behind. There is Jason coming into Casio. Now, don't forget, Jason had his own drive through Biggles as well and lost a bunch of positions. So Matt is still going to be looking at cruising down the pit lane. There's Matt yep. taking it nice and easy. Here Boom. comes Jason. Yep, good set job done. Uh, yeah, I don't think Sago's going to get him, though. I've got a funny feeling. Oh. Oh, I'm saying that. Oh, no, he may be. I think he may be getting there as well. Yeah, they say what goes around comes around, doesn't it, with those people? He's got him, I think. Uh, Has he? Oh, no, he's Max literally at the end. Of that oh, of yes, he got him. Sago's got <laughs> right outside. Poor Matt O'Dor. Down into a level. Oh, and look at that. Can't even get the power oh. down, sliding out of the corner. Frustrated and screaming a bunch of this in that cockpit right now <laughs> absolutely and there is Matt Odor all the way down into 11th place going to be absolutely kicking himself drive through penalty for exceeding track limits and unfortunately he's now dropped down the order but there is the looming <laughs> I'm sure he's on the radio to his team going what track limits just as the F1 drivers do what, what, what do you mean <laughs> unfortunately when it comes to esports racing boys and girls ladies and gentlemen that the AI picks on every little tiny mistake you do and it doesn't come down to a Michael Massey or any other race control. They know where the markers are. It's uh, pinpoint mm. precision with computers. And well, Mr. Merrick knows exactly what he's doing because he's got an eight second gap to lead this race over Rodriguez. Yeah. And now it's all on JB, still defending for Chris Lamack. It just seems that, you know, these guys have almost written a story during this last hour. You know, we had the introduction where they start getting together. Then we had the chapter one where they were still going. We're now in chapter 57 and the guys are still going on lap 23. And Chris again. Here we go. He's going to be tucked up right behind JB now on this run down into turn one. Chris is trying to go up the inside. Don't leave the door open, JB. There's a burglar on his way. And his name is going to be Chris Namak as he comes around. Oh! It ain't over yet. He's given up. They haven't given up. No. Chris is now coming up now. Through the edges. Done. Job done. Thank you very much, JB. I will have that sixth place. You want to leave your door open, son. You're going to get robbed. And oh, there uh, it is. JB left the door open into turn one. And Chris made his move and set him up, up going into the entrance to the S's. And it was job done for Chris Namak there. So Chris is now through. 
It's also bringing oh, yeah. Mr. Mr. Gilbert into play here for the golf racing mm -hmm. team number eight because he's now catching that little party, of course, for the P6 crew with 10 minutes and change to go in this race. Couple more laps up your sleeve and they're throwing that golf cart around tooth and nail, isn't he? Just chucking that thing into a corner and just praying it sticks. Yeah, Matt O'Donnell now has got this interesting thing right here because obviously Matt is up sitting in the, the silver class currently. And of course, Sego Ma is in the pros. Now, Matt has obviously been quicker, and there's no disrespect to Sego, he has. He's obviously up the order a lot more. Um, so, Matt now has got to be looking at trying to make this run round into the hairpin, or he's going to keep losing time. And, uh, and I think from Matt's point of view, he, he kind of needs to clear Sego as soon as possible. Don't get me wrong, I don't think he's going to be anywhere near Jason Ludwig come the end, but I think Matt can at least try and gain one position but guess who's back coming back at the moment that p7 p8 battle that ain't over yet between the audi and bmw it got very very close two close close battles of course that are occurring here you still have p6 up for grabs between seventh and eighth here as well as obviously the battle for p10 that's brewing up mm. and that's what's going to be the dying stages of our suzuka round two here in hapon and uh yep you can get anything you want from those vending machines later on to yeah, cool down sort of thing like they were talking about like you get tires and maybe that was just me reading a meme i'm not quite sure but you know there's a lot they can get out of these vending machines in japan there is of course because once again it comes down to that baby boomer generation of course after the, after the war and so that's why japan's the leading robotics industry as well too because they have that problem of having to find your pit crew really to take care of the elderly in the future because the younger generation the elderly population outnumbered the younger generation so you need vending machines to to fill the, the the gap void at the moment for the workforce but we're not filling any gaps and voids in this one because another battle's brewing p4 p5 of course battle for p6 is brewed and of course p10 and 11 of the door <laughs> and uh mr ma oh dong and lao both from the same team um, oh, yeah, I thought we got away from Nicolas Cage's face there for a second, but we're no, back at it. Fear the cage. <laughs> Dog allowed it here this evening. Oh, I'd have to say cage. Mr. Adore, but I don't think those teammates are going to do anything. But I want to see if the Audi Adore there is going to do the number one car, of course, that we saw after making that mistake there, is now trying to chase down the Golf McLaren. It gets so close and then it has to back off. Where is your overtaking opportunities? You can't do it in the hairpin right now. It's not close enough. He'll, yeah. he'll try and, if he can, I, I would basically look at trying to get as close as I can for Matt Odor. Um, obviously, the difference for it being last time out, Matt did a 202, Sega did a 2032, Matt did a 202.9, so there's no real drastic difference. You're talking about four temps, but I think for Matt Odor, he's got to be looking at trying to set him up here to go that run down. Oh, Sega's made a mistake in Spoon. Oh, the that's... Side by side, there's contact. Yep, I think he did that, hunting him down there and got the job done. There it is, oh, right on cue, man. Yeah. It, he choreographed it. He said, James, just watch this, mate. I'll tell you how to get an overtake done here in Suzuka. And he did, literally. Matt O'Dor is through, and Matt now up into 10th place. So, it's now got trying to defend from Sego. So it looks like Sego got a lot better running out of the Casio Triangle, mind you. Yeah, remember the different beasts and machines too. So mm. whether or not that McLaren has a little bit more straight line speed and a little bit more cornering speed, I have to say that would be the case. The Audi, it looks like it's so much better through the corners. And then once again, down the straight line, it looks like the McLaren has the McLaren power. But then again, you got to overtake generally in corners, not in straights. Yeah, I think the interesting thing, though, as well, is Matt has just been naturally quicker. You know, his best time for the whole race is 201.39. Sego's is a 202.5. You know, there's like 1.2 difference here. And um, um, that's why Matt O'Dor would really kind of needed to clear him. Can he catch up with Jason Ludwig? Absolutely not. Aaron yeah. uh, Peters there has been overtaken by the Robert Lau and May Dong. They are literally nose to tail for fourth and fifth. Are there team orders? Are there team orders? Uh, I don't know. Would you, would you want team orders? Oh, well, team bosses don't want team orders. They don't want to issue team orders, but I did uh, well, well, casting did. a race matter, earlier that, uh, before, and I had two McLaren drivers go for two for now, and I found out after in post-race interviews that there was no team orders. And guess what? They collided, 
and one of them went backwards. So you gotta first, you gotta work together as a team. I'm pretty sure they're gonna be in the VC chat and making sure they're gonna take care of that. Also, don't forget that little battle is brewing between P6 and P7 too. You know the interesting thing about that is, of course, we've got Mei Dong in silver who's gonna want the points, and we've got Robert Lau in pro who's gonna really want the points. Different, cl different classes. Does the pro have the authority? That's going to be the interesting thing. Ooh, yeah. Who's the alpha? Nicholas Cage. Who's the alpha Mayo here between, yeah. you know, <laughs> Mei Dong and Robert Lau? If they were a wolf pack, who's going to be the biggest howler? Ooh. Is it going to be Mei Dong? Is it going to be Robert Lau? See, I like that one. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to write that one down myself, to be honest, because that I, covered I swear. me at, like, literally you 20 can, past 6 in the morning. You can catch into James here in, in his spare time. He goes and, and performs improv comedy at one of the local clubs there in the United <laughs> Kingdom. <laughs> I don't. Please don't do that. Don't go I, I'm pretty sure you do. You come up with improv on the fly here at the moment. But I'll tell you one thing who's not improv anything at this end. That's probably been a scripted race, isn't it, Mr. Merrick? Almost a 10-second gap there. Cruising uh, on up the road. Perhaps you'd probably give him... This is a thing, isn't it? When you lead the race all the time quietly, you never get the cameras on you, do you? No. But then, you know, he's storming away, and he's 9.7 seconds up the road, not put a foot long all race. He's got 4.34 left on the clock. You know, they're going to get, he's got a last time out a two minute lap, so he's going to have at least two more laps here. And that's the thing for the Wishmakers team is, is you know, once you're out in front, you're out in front, and you, you've got nobody battling around you. So, yeah, especially when you've got the battles for like JB. James, that's what I told on. you about uh, what 53 minutes ago. That's what I told you he was going to do, and you, know, you got you to listen. He's got the little unicorn on the side there. Of course, that is the the unicorn. Believe it or not, is actually I believe on the uh, as one of the Scottish yeah. national uh, animals, isn't it? Like. I don't know. It's I think a, I'm pretty sure it is. It's a, it's oh, a mythical yeah. creature. It's a mythical, yeah, exactly. But hey, the Scots believe in it. They believe in, in Nessie. Mate, they believe in a lot of things. They believe eating <laughs> haggis is good for them as well, and it definitely <laughs> ain't. So, you know what I mean? Not picking on the Scots. If there's any Scottish people, I do apologise. Much love. No, I you've already picked on them. That's it. It's uh, no. <laughs> yeah. rude. You are in the United Kingdom, of course. So you are United. And I'll tell you what, he is United in the number 46 car there. Mr. Merrick just... Cruising on by a couple of minutes to go there, maybe a lap or two, 27 where we're on. And he's a nice 10 second buffer there to Mr. Rodriguez, who was kind of close at some point. I think that he really narrowed it down to about three seconds to four seconds there. Took the undercut, didn't pay off. Merrick covered him off, got close mm. once again for a little bit, but that was it. After that, Merrick just put the hit the loud pedal and uh, louded his way right now into a, perhaps a race victory in Japan. Yeah, I think the interesting thing with that is the gap come down. I think the lowest it got down to was about 3.3 after the pit stop. And then Jace has just gone, well, that's it now. You're close enough. See you later. You know, he, he, he's done it with style and grace. He, he led from the start. He went in. Oh, yeah. Sorry, go back to that one panel of P6, P7. Still, I got so close. Sorry to cut you off, James. I would worry about the BMW team, but here it is side by side. 220 versus 74. Audi versus Ferrari. And that's the job JB's done. JB's got through. Yeah, JB got through again. And they're running no. out of time if you want to if you want to exchange that again. Yeah. JB got the job done on Chris. These two guys are having an absolute barnstorming battle. But going back to Jace, just really, really quickly, right? He's got out and he, he led from the start. He went in second in the pits. He covered up Tony come out in front of Tony. Tony got back at about 3.3. And then Jason just got, well, see you later. I've got again. And, you know, Tony's just got no answer. I know Tony's struggled for practice this week. He hasn't quite got the lap times in that he really wanted to. You know, but he, he's just, he can't get near him. Jason's gone over the line again. His best time, literally two minutes, point four, the fastest lap of the race. You know, last time out, he did a 201.147. Tony's last time out was a 202-175. So Jace has got Lily a second quicker again. Yeah, so Jace, so see, yeah, just... yeah the, you're right, because the key, Jace put those consistent laps. I'd look at his laps, and he was always lapping in the 201s majority Ooh. of the time, and that's the key, isn't it? Ooh, this battle's still definitely brewing here in the dying stages of the race. 
Who wants it? I mean, he's the leading Ferrari, of course. We know one Audi's winning this race. We know one Audi at the moment is trying to defend a P6. tell you what that Audi is not trying to defend me he's trying to out there if he could pull a tank out of that boot he probably would to have a go at Chris because Chris is like literally crawling absolutely crawling all over the back of him I tell you that much and uh I have to keep an eye oh. on how that one is going to do Jace Merrick now coming round Cassio there's going to be one more lap here tonight for Jace Merrick this is going to be yeah. coming over Welcome the to your morning coffee of uh, Sunday night racing, mate. That's waking you yeah. up now, hasn't it? Yeah, leaders on the final lap as we've got the confirmation down in the right-hand side. May Dong and Robert Lau still haven't switched positions. I'm wondering if they are going to, because as I say, Robert in the pro, May in the silver. JB and Chris are now still fighting. They've got literally through spoons. So Chris has only got one and a half laps to go. What is he going to be able to do here? Is he going to be able to get in front of JB again? I think the problem is, is once Chris gets in front, he, 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 he kind of can't, he doesn't have enough tools in the trunk to throw out the window to stop JB coming back through. You know what I mean? Where JB literally, if he could throw the roof off his house, he probably would have done. But he just, Chris just kind of didn't have enough tools in his armory to stop JB. You know, JB's positioned his car quite well. And it's taken Chris a long time to get through, and now Ooh. it's the other way round, Biggles. Yeah, switch your room between them. Yeah, switched. yeah that, they, they elected. This could be the final opportunity. He's going to do exactly what you'd mentioned there. If we go back to that battle, of course, because we did know it was a switch room between who's seen more Nicolas Cage movies yeah. than anybody else, but find out who oh, it is side by again. side. This is it. Live. Final time. You're going to get that opportunity. Who wants P6? Oh. Chris, you should have lined up behind him coming through the S's there, buddy. I'm not going to lie. Merrick's just put the fast lap in of the race. Whereas Jace is picking him up. He's down the back stretch now. We'll follow him round. We'll give him some airtime here for Jace Merrick as he's going to be coming round the last a couple of corners here. Round 180R we go into the Casio Triangle. Is he wondering if it was going to be even on the track anymore? Mate, I don't <laughs> do you know what. I bet he's just sat in there. It was just like a Sunday drive, wasn't it? He's gone out. He's, he's almost put, it reminds me of somebody who puts your grandmother in a car and takes her for a ride around the countryside. And that's literally what Jace has just done. As he comes across the line, your winner for round two here for the Sunday Drive Racing League is Jace Merrick. Mate, I, I, there's no superlatives of what Jace has achieved. He's gone led from start to finish. Tony Rodriguez coming across the line in second place. Charles Ho in an amazing third. Fair play to Charles. Rob Lau. And May Dong swap, swapped positions. Now, this is where we say they swap positions, right? They'll come out later on after they've watched it back and go, no, James, we didn't swap. He just passed me. And I'll be <laughs> like, all right, okay, well, there we go. Kills the team orders, but there we go. And uh, JB now, this is it. This is Chris's opportunity. What do we reckon, Big Oz? Is he going to get him in Catio? If he has, he's got to send it. Nah. It's got to be too, it's got to be too yeah, far back. Yeah, uh, that's risking a possible... Uh, key points playing positions here is not worth it. It's uh, you're only yeah. in round two, more races to JB. come. Yeah, JB, the stand in for Alex Shen brings that car home in sixth place with Chris Namak in seventh, Michael Gilbert in eighth, Jason Ludwig recovering in ninth. There, that is the Batmark and McLaren of Kelly. So, Jason Ludwig comes across the line. Juan Namak has finished as has Aaron Peters. The very unlucky drive through penalty, Matt O'Dor, 14 minutes before the end of the race, comes across the line in 10th. Sago Mar in 11th. And then we're just waiting for James Namak to come over the line. There is James. Merrick's a strong competitor. Well, he led the race from start to finish. I would definitely say he's well and truly up there. Um, so, yeah. So here is your overall standings. 
As you can see, Merrick does take the victory. Rodriguez in second, Charles Ho in third, Robert Lau in fourth, Mei Dong in fifth, JB Alcabal. Absolutely amazing battle. Chris Lamack in sixth and seventh. There, Matthew, uh, Michael Gilbert in eighth, Jason Ludwig in ninth, Matt O'Dor in tenth, Sego Ma in eleventh, James Lamack down in twelfth, Juan Namak in thirteenth, Aaron Peters fourteenth, Matt Kelly fifteenth. And then we've got um, Nick Show in 16th, 16th and Jake Hanelin, the also the other stand-in, is down in 17th place. Well, I think Biggles, that just kind of was just one of them races that Jace dominated, didn't he? That was just, he absolutely annihilated it, really. That is Jace Merrick. Let's see if we can have a word with Jace. It'd be good to can. Uh, we'll try and get hold of Mr. Merrick. Bear with. So there we go. Woo! Great racing, JB. Thank you for subbing in for me. May JB, you owe JB massive, Alex. He defended like a trooper, absolutely trooper. And we are going to pull in your winner this evening, the man who started off in a race and finished on a Sunday drive because he took it from that so far. Out in front is Mr. Jason Merrick. Jason, welcome into the booth, buddy. How are you? Uh, tired. Uh, to, tired. The, ra the race kind of took a lot out of me. Uh, I have a, I had to crack open a water bottle while I was on track. All right, okay, but it was not a difficult race, though, was it? Mm hmm. Well, Tony kept me honest uh, throughout the first half, and uh, I guess he got exhausted as well, and I just kind of took advantage of it. Um, yeah. The um, the setup, like it, I I just love what I did with the setup. Like it felt like I could just go anywhere and it just stick. Well, I can guarantee you, mate, that it literally did stick as well because you know you finished 13 seconds ahead. You were pulling out lap time after lap time after lap time. You know. Your last lap was 201, um, Tony was on the 202. Tony was consistently round about the late 201s, 202s. You were just consistently banging in the 201s. And, and it was just an incredible performance. You led, you covered Tony off in the pit stops, you come out in front again, and you led again. And the closest Tony ever got to you was about 3.3 .3 seconds. So you were absolutely flying. Yeah, if there's anything I learned from the uh, media day race is that the undercut is uh, really strong if uh, the leading car doesn't react to it. So that that's kind of the lesson I learned from that. And uh, the lesson I learned from media day also is to uh, give people space. <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, that's behind me, though. Um, yeah. Was there much space needed for you, though, Jace? Because once you got off the line, mate, there was no, there was nobody ever needed, near, nowhere near. Um. Well, I mean, yeah, not really. When you put it that nobody way, you're dominant, mate. There was nobody. Trust me, I've been sat here, Jace, for the last hour, looking at your racing, and uh, there was no one near you. You absolutely flew away from it, buddy. I cannot give you enough superlatives of how much class you've just literally pulled out on that field because they were they're still they were still down in turn one, and you were halfway round up through towards the S's, mate. So you were absolutely flying, Jace. Look, congratulations on your victory tonight, buddy. Is there anyone you want to give a shout out to before you leave the booth this evening? Well, thank you to my uh, grandma who is sleeping in the other room who uh, had to come in here a few times because I was uh, acting a bit too, being a bit too loud. Um, so kind of awkward to try and talk, calm her down while I'm driving, but um, understandable because uh, everybody's going to get up early in the morning. Um, She's going to be a uh, shake. Uh, give her one of those bottles of champagne, mate, to spray all over the room there to celebrate that victory, of course. And uh, loud, mate. These cars are loud. You're loud. Um, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I was. I mean, you can talk to uh, Aaron and um, uh, the, 
Sorry, I forgot his name. He was the Ferrari that retired. He came in as my, uh, as our AM sub. Um, but um, you, you can talk to them. Like, I, I was actually quite quiet, uh, save for, like, one or two instances. Um, yeah, did you even see anybody else on the track for half that race? Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, I did end up encountering lap traffic. Uh, and, you know, they were kind enough to get out of the way. Um, and if they weren't, then uh, I made my way around them regardless. Uh, didn't lay a finger on him. Um, so, yeah. Absolutely amazing there, Jason. Thank you so much for joining me in the booth. And uh, maybe we'll look forward to seeing you next time out in Donington on the, uh, on the lead lap there, buddy. All righty. Thank you. Take care. Right, I'm going to do a double interview now, and um, what I'm going to do here is bring in Mr. Chris Namak and JB Algamar. Don't forget, JB was standing in for Alex Shen. Um, Alex has been in chat saying, whoa, great racing, JB. Thank you for <laughs> subbing in for me. I think, to be honest, Alex, I think you need to go out and buy JB a massive six-pack, 24-pack, whatever pack you want to buy him, because you two, I brought you both in together. Now, this could be really dangerous on me, but I'm going to do a double one at the same time. You've been absolutely providing the race in this evening. You know, we've been focusing on you guys. Matt O'Dor was in the mix as well at one point, you know. Michael Gilbert was closing you down. What was going through your head? Because from our point of view up in the booth, you two together, and if we go with Chris, go first, absolutely stellar racing all night. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a lot of fun. I did not expect it to get that heated between me and JB, to be honest. Um, after after I started building a gap on him, um, I don't know. I felt I felt comfortable, and I think that comfort messed me up because I broke way too late for one of those turns where I went off, and he got back on me, and we were just going for it, man. It was uh, it was difficult. To, to catch up and then towards the end i had the elbows out i was getting really aggressive and uh he just got the better of me yeah mm, the jp from your point of view i am sweating uh <laughs> <laughs> from the no, beginning of, me, from the beginning of the race i mean chris and matt they were kind of um you know in, in the same area as i was in and i knew they were on the same team uh, obviously their pace was faster. My sector one is terrible. So that's where they made up a lot of time. But, uh, you know, as far as defending, I was certainly holding both of them off and, you know, just hoping they make mistakes behind me as I held them up. And then, you know, I, I push where I need to. Yeah, it, it was, it was pretty wild. Like Matt and I swapped at one point because I made a mistake chasing down JB yeah. and, uh, he, I, I gave him like two laps before, you know, the team order happened because I kept catching up to him and, he was pushing really hard to get past them, and then he got the drive through. <laughs> that was unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. That kind of eliminated Matt out at 14 minutes remaining. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I would have been absolutely gutted. You know, Biggles was pressing his beep, beep, beep button in my ear, <laughs> what Matt would have probably been saying. But overall, I think from the racing perspective, you guys had an absolute barnstorming race. You know, JB, your defending was just incredible. I think at one point we were talking about kitchen sinks, ladles, and any other kitchen appliance that you might have stored in the back of the car that you were throwing out the window at Chris. You know what I mean? Because it was just amazing. You know, Chris, i got to say, though, you, you come out in the end losing the battle. You know, is that like, you know, JB's obviously subbed in for Alex. We know that already. But is it a kick in the teeth that you drive so hard and so tough, and you got JB going at you constantly, and then you still finish behind him. Is, 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 is it that bit of pill to swallow, do you think? Or do you sit back and think, do you know what, actually, that was just an amazing race. I couldn't have cared if JB finished in front of me. We had a literally epic race. I mean, yeah, when we, when we crossed the line, I was definitely a little sad about it. But, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think I drove as aggressively as I should have, th especially throughout, like, my first stint. I was very relaxed and actually relax is the wrong word i was very patient because i wasn't that comfortable <laughs> with uh like the extra weight in the car um it wasn't until the second stint where i started getting really comfortable and you know by the time i got comfortable with the amount of aggression i was putting putting out it was just a little bit too late and you know i i lost it at the end of the day but the racing between jb and i is pretty much exactly why i have this hobby you know 
Mm. Um, it's stuff like that, win or lose. Like as long as it's a really good race between uh, fellow drivers, like I think it's all that matters at the end of the day. Absolutely, JB. Your opinions on it? You know, you come out victorious. Did you come out and give yourself a big whoop whoop as you went over the line? Because I would have done after I've had an amazing battle like that. Oh, I was definitely smirking, and I, the first thing I did was message the management and uh, see if they were pissed off that I was holding them up and defending like a lion. Uh, <laughs> JB, do me a favor. Language, language. Uh, yes, yes. Sorry about that. Uh, but you know, I'm glad that the race Excuse overall. Excuse the swear words. Don't you know we ignore that Biggles, You weren't quick enough with the button on that one. I got a <laughs> delay. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a lag there, but uh, yeah, I know from the beginning of the race, uh, my tires were pretty toast uh, pretty early on, so I pitted immediately when the pit window opened. Uh, so by towards the end of the race, uh, they were completely toast in defending Chris and and Matt. But uh, I'm glad that early pit stop actually worked out because when I exited. Or actually, when Chris and Matt pitted, I ended up in front of them. So, uh, you know, I think the early pit stop really worked out for me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, it was just an absolutely incredible race. Um, let's start off with JB as you did finish in front of Chris. Is there anyone you want to give a shout out to before you leave the booth this evening, buddy? Uh, actually, you guys. Uh, big shout out to you all. I, I've watched uh, your commentating in the previous race as a reserve driver, and it's just entertaining uh, overall. And I can't wait to... Uh, to hear the uh, broadcast of myself racing appreciate it thank you very much uh chris anything from you i uh, definitely want to shout out you guys again um thank you guys for for providing this for us you know i think it's really elevated our uh sim racing experience as a community and um it's been a lot of fun being in these races i also want to shout out my girlfriend she's uh she's sitting at home watching this race she's feeling a little under the weather so um hoping she feels better soon Oh, uh, get well soon. What's her name? Uh, her name's Kim. Kim. Yeah, well, get Kim, well soon. Uh, as they say, behind every great uh, man, there's an even greater woman. So she's the one that obviously lifts you up and motivates you to put on this fantastic Definitely. league. Exactly. So thank you guys for joining us in the booth, and we look forward to maybe having a chat with you next time. Cheers. Thanks. Take care. Have a good one. Right. So there is JB and Chris. Um... That kind of sums it up, really, doesn't it? You know, they, they, they'd they had an epic battle. JB had a smirk. Chris had a little bit of discontent. You know, maybe he should have pushed earlier. Maybe he, he, he should have gotten that aggressive side of it. But at the end of the day, racing's racing. And, and, and that's kind of, um, you know, what we would expect from them, Biggles. You know, if, you, if I said to you, sum it up in one sentence, could you? Yes, but I can't at the moment because I had the word in my mouth. But, uh, hey, I could sum it up in, in uh, three words. Sunday driving racing on a Monday. Wow. On a Monday. I do love that. That, that. that does make me chuckle. But I will point out one thing. If there was any one man that was on a Sunday drive this, this evening, this morning, wherever you are watching it, it was Jace Merrick. He dominated didn't he there was a, there was a shadow of a doubt that he literally said to the field well guys you want to stay there go but i'm i'm still you know at the end of the day gonna run away with this and he he, he absolutely cleared off didn't he hey, yeah I, I said that i told you at the start mate you didn't listen to me did you i already predicted it uh, i foreseen I it you were picking the winner <laughs> oh yeah here we go you know, the, guy, but... the guy at the front of the grid you're right, but whether or not we, who are we predicting, predicting to win, mate, because we're off to your neck of the woods in a couple of weeks' time, of course, on the 28th. We head back to the United Kingdom, mate, so a short trip for you. Any predictions for will that momentum continue? Mm, I think if Jace can carry on where he left off here, I think he will do. He's got a big boost of confidence at the moment, and I think it would be absolutely incredible. Um, I don't know. I, I think Tony may come back now and put a, a little bit more laps into practice. Um, he knows he didn't do enough for this one, so whether or not he will come back again, I think that's going to be even stronger. But from you know, from my point of view, I think um, I'm going to be looking at Tony's performance really in quality to see how he gets on. Because I think Tony needs to put the laps in now after literally just being dominated by Jay Smerrick, to be fair. And Donington is coming up, so whether he can mastermind that classic track, one, one classic track, of course, of Suzuka in Japan, over to another classic track in a couple of weeks. It's been great, of course. Wakes mm. you up in the morning, doesn't it, mate? There's your morning coffee right there. A bit of great Sunday Absolutely. night racing. <laughs> right.
right, guys, uh, that is it. We are going to wrap up the broadcast. Thank you so much for joining me in this evening, this morning, or this afternoon, wherever you are in the world. It's morning for me. It's literally quarter to seven. Um, Big O's is about quarter to two. Yep, yeah, in this part, of course, for most of the drivers here from mm. the Americas, uh, West Coast, East Coast, and all over the planet. But thank you very much. It's been fantastic. Looking forward to, to the next race. Yep, and from myself, James Parfit and Dean Biggles, you all take care. Have a great week. And you never know, we might see you on the track sometime. Good night.